Hi, and welcome to day 21 of National Diabetes Awareness Month. Every single day this month, I'm doing a video about a various topic in diabetes. Today's topic is all about me being a teenager with diabetes. It wasn't pretty. So <laughs> this video is not really going to be inspirational as much as hopefully you can learn from my experiences. As always, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate the support. So if you know from my day one video, I was diagnosed with diabetes at five years old. And from age five to about 11, 12, 13, my parents were primarily the ones doing my management. And therefore my management was fine. Did I have a perfect A1C and no higher low blood sugars? No, I didn't have a CGM. Like the technology was not as advanced as it was today. So, you know, I did fine. My parents were mostly the ones doing it and they did a great job. However, when I hit that age of like 12 or 13, first of all, we moved. So we moved from New Jersey to North Carolina. So I was starting in a new school and for the first time ever, I was kind of in charge of my own management. I was in middle school. I, at this new school, I did not have a school nurse. So I wasn't like going every day to see a nurse and give myself my uh, dosing with my pump. But I was, like, my teachers knew about it, but they weren't, like, I had told my mom, I was like, I can do this by myself. I can do it. It'll be fine. It wasn't fine. <laughs> so at this period of my life, okay, new school, I'm a new kid, I have this disease, and I have to wear this, like, thing on my shorts with this big wire on it. I felt so different and just out of it. It was a small school. All the kids knew each other. So when someone new came in, it was like, I just, I already felt like an outsider. And on top of that, diabetes made me feel like even more of an outsider. Plus just this age in general is so tough. So we've got a perfect storm. I would say that during this time in my life, I was doing okay, not good, but I was doing okay 50% of the time. So, you know, maybe 50% of the time I would bolus, 50% of the time I just didn't. 50% of the time I would check my blood sugar when I was meant to. But I'll be honest, there were days that I did not check my blood sugar at all. And I look back and I'm like, oh my God, Megan, how did you do that? But it just, it wasn't something, I just, it made me feel so different. It made me feel so not how I wanted to feel when I paid attention to my diabetes. For example, I remember one time we were doing, we were running the mile in PE and I'm pretty fast, I'm not gonna brag. Especially at that time in my life, I don't think so anymore. But I was pretty fast, so I wanted to like, I'm the new kid, like I wanted to show that like, I can do this, I can run a mile. So I had taken off my pump because I didn't want it to distract me and I didn't want a low blood sugar. I put my lump, my pump in my bag in my locker and we did the mile. I was one of the first girls to finish. I was like, oh, I'm so cool. And I went, you know, when we went back to change after PE, I didn't put my pump back on. I was just like, I'm just not gonna do it. And we had like a English class later that day. And I remember sitting in English class being like, oh my God, Megan, you have to throw up. So I went to the bathroom, I threw up, didn't tell anyone. Obviously my blood sugar was like probably 500 <laughs> and I just I didn't tell anyone I went right back into class I did put on my pump went right back into class finished the class went home with my mom and she's like I was cool and I was like I actually had a really high blood sugar and I threw up and she's like why didn't you call me like you know but at that time in my life I just there was just this mental block like I just didn't want anything to do with this disease I felt like if I ignored diabetes, I would feel free. It would go away. Obviously that doesn't work. When I ignore diabetes, I feel like shit. But again, I was young. That was just how I felt. I talk a lot about the feelings of shame and embarrassment and just feeling different and all this stuff. And I often get comments back from that, from people being like, oh my God, you shouldn't be embarrassed. You shouldn't be ashamed. You're so strong, you're so brave. And I know I shouldn't feel like that, but the fact is I did. There was something in my life 
or something not in my life that caused me to have those feelings. And they're valid. It sucks having diabetes and that's how I coped with it. So please don't comment in this video. You shouldn't feel bad about that. I did. Whether, whether, I, whether diabetes is something that you should feel bad about or not, the fact of the matter is I did. I didn't have a community. I had literally just moved. So I didn't even have friends, let alone friends with type one diabetes. And this, I really struggled. I really struggled. I look back and I say I struggled. And the moment if you would have asked me, I would have been like, oh yeah, it's fine. I'm just, I don't really care about diabetes. But I struggled, absolutely. So just gonna give you a brief overview of high school and then I'll talk about some things that I wish I would have had or done or you know, support I wish I had. So, you know, that was pretty much my middle school. Obviously, the older I got, I, I did like learn a little bit. I probably paid a little bit more attention. But again, I would still say 50% of the time I was just doing okay. And the other 50% of the time I was pretending like it absolutely didn't exist. When I got into high school, I think it moved from I'm a new kid and I feel different to I want boys to like me. <laughs> And I didn't think that having something like diabetes would be something that anyone was remotely interested in pursuing a romantic relationship with or whatever you want to call high school romances. So I definitely struggled on that side of things. Not only did I, you know, teenage years are not easy, but on top of that, I was like, how am I ever going to get a boyfriend if I have diabetes? To me, that just felt like you couldn't have both. You couldn't have a boyfriend and diabetes. Like who would want to date someone with diabetes? And now looking back now, I know that that was just a reflection of how I felt about myself. This is obviously deeper than just diabetes, but diabetes has a huge part of it. I didn't love myself enough. So I was like, how could anyone else love me? And diabetes was kind of that scapegoat that I used. If I couldn't love myself with this stupid disease, how could anyone else do it? So there's a lot of self-work I had to go through in order to come back around. But this is obviously, none of this is actually true. I'm happily married. I've had some great romantic and friend relationships in my life and I've always had diabetes. So that is not the defining factor of why somebody would or wouldn't like you. But at that time, like that's what it was to me. And this, on top of just like not even knowing what to do, caused a lot more just strife in my relationship with diabetes. I went off the pump. Again, I thought that having that physical thing on me would not be like sexy or cool or whatever. So I went on to pens. But this whole like self-love was the biggest struggle for me. Just not feeling like I accepted myself not feeling like I fit in with anyone because I had this stupid disease. I absolutely lied to endocrinologists. I'd be like, oh yeah, my sugar's been great and like fill in the logbook, all fake. I know other people have been there too. To me, I just, I was just like, I just have to keep up appearances and I'll be okay. Now playing sports, I think really did help me at this time because it gave me a reason to like kind of care. Like obviously I didn't want to have a, you know, 300 blood sugar as I was about to play you know, a field hockey game. I didn't want to have a low blood sugar. So I was a little bit more aware at that time in my life, but I didn't, definitely did not have the knowledge that I have now to really support myself in sports or in any activity. So I think sports was a little bit of like, thank God that was there, or I think I would have been even lower in terms of like my effort with diabetes. So if I could go back in time, what would I change? First of all, I changed nothing. I was very fortunate to not walk away with any complications during this time in my life, knock on wood, or that I have yet. So I'm every day thankful for that. I'm also thankful for my experiences because it allows me definitely to connect with people in a different way. Because I've been there, I've had, I've had those really tough struggles and experiences. I feel like when I'm like making videos like this or talking to people on Instagram, it's a lot easier to be like, oh, I get it. Like I've been there, I get it. And not that I'm perfect now, but there is just this like greater connection. But the one thing I do think would have really helped me overall during that time in my life was 
community. And not just community of like knowing other people type one, because like we did the um, like the JDRF walks when I was growing up. We did, I went to a diabetes camp, but I actually got an ear infection like the first day I was there and had to go home after the first night. So I like didn't make any friends. But I think really what I would have loved is having people my age to connect with about diabetes. My dad has diabetes, so like he gets it, but he also wasn't being a kid. He was diagnosed at 28. Um, and I think being a kid or being a teenager and experiencing all that comes with being a teenager alongside diabetes, having other people to relate to with that would have really helped me at that point in my life. So I do wish I had that. But at the same time, if my mom was like, hey, do you want to go to a support group about type 1 diabetes with a bunch of other teens? I would have laughed in her face. I would have been like, absolutely not. And probably never done it. Maybe I would have, I don't know. But I definitely feel that having, or even just a friend that had it, that got it, I think I would have done better. And also I think if I would have had social media and, and followed people who were doing well with their type 1 diabetes and who were playing sports and being active and having boyfriends and doing this, if I would have seen that, I would have been able to work through some of those mental blocks. But overall, it had to be something at the end of the day that came from me. And it wasn't something that was like my parents were like forcing it on me or a doctor was forcing it on me. It had to be something that seemed cool and I wanted to do it, which eventually it did. That's ex eventually how I found my way and my path and my health journey that brought me to where I am today, which is somewhere that I'm really proud of. Again, doesn't mean I'm perfect, but I'm definitely, good days are not the exception, they're the standard, because I know that I know what to do to have those good days. And I know that I'm willing to do it mentally. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to come back tomorrow, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you later.